Our next caller is Ryan from West Virginia. Hey, what's up, Ryan? How can we help you? Hey, I was wondering what you guys thought about the sequencing of training, ordering hypertrophy first and then strength followed up by power. Okay, so you're asking about phasing your training, um, and uh, that's actually a really good question because phasing is important, and the order of the phases actually uh, makes a difference. Now, for people who aren't familiar with the terms they use, right, so hypertrophy meaning mm -hmm. muscle size and growth, typically straight sets, typically the rep ranges are anywhere between 8 to maybe 15 reps, typically. Strength would be more of the low end, kind of low gear type strength, lower reps, longer rest periods, so like one to five reps. Power is lighter weight, lots of speed uh, with your movement. So Olympic lifts would be a good example of that, but you could also do, you know, box jumps and you know kettlebell exercises to to accomplish that. So the first two that you named were hypertrophy and strength. Those are actually interchangeable in the sense mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter which one you start with. I you would can pick, make an argument for both. Yeah, and I would pick the one that is least is is least like what you're doing now. So in other words, if you're currently training in a hypertrophy style, then I would start with strength. If you're currently training in strength, like a power lifter, then I would start with hypertrophy. The next one should be either strength or hypertrophy. So those are the two that you start with. Power usually last. And the reason for power being last it's the most technical. You're going to need strength. You're going to need hypertrophy. You're going to need the stability to perform that. It's the most advanced and most technical of the phases. Uh, I would very rarely would I ever have someone train power um, with speed power, especially before moving to the others, unless they're super experienced, advanced. You would never do that. No, yeah. no coach would ever. No coach would ever have power. Even if you were advanced, you still would lay some found foundation first before you express that. I mean, that's like in every every certification you'll ever go through and they teach that in any schooling around you know kinesiology so mm -hmm. you you always want power less but i, I mean i'm just going to piggyback on what sal's saying I, I don't have anything really more to add and contribute other than you know i would have fun with changing the other ones up power is the only one that's really important that you lay a solid foundation of strength and stability before you express that right so that's the idea um, and then I guess the next thing you could add is about how long you plan to stay in those. <clears throat> I wouldn't stay in any phase longer than six weeks, and I would go as long or as uh, no shorter than three weeks, some, somewhere in that range, which is very similar to any of our MAPS programming. Are you following any MAPS, or have you followed MAPS, Ryan? I have not yet. Uh, I, that's why I was kind of wondering with your map performance if you guys phased it sort of in that that, order like that yeah that's the perfect mm -hmm. one for you if you're looking for those types of phases maps performance uh would be ideal now performance starts with more of a strength phase but it moves through them you do go through hypertrophy and you do have uh, other phases and it does end with the explosive movements we'll make sure to send that to you since you don't have that um and it's all okay. set up it's all set up and ordered uh ordered up for you so you'll just follow the program awesome thank you all right no problem yeah, you know, um, I, I like questions like this because I think people are. Uh, and maybe this is just our own bias because they, you know, our listeners, people are start. People are starting to realize the importance of the programming, mm -hmm. right? It's not mm -hmm. just exercises. It's not just body parts, but the order of operation. The order of operation, the intensity, the reps, the 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 intent. Like, there's, I, I could literally list an almost infinite number of, of variables right. that make a big difference. Like, they make a huge difference. You know, when, when people's bodies stop responding, it's like they don't look at their programming anymore. It's right. like, what supplement can I take? Or, or am and I eating? What have you been doing? Where do you fit into all that? Like, how do I structure something that will actually, like, promote change uh, within what I've already been trying to accomplish? I think, too, with these two, like the first one, we're, we're, we're talking about hypertrophy versus strength. And, you know, as a trainer bringing somebody new in, you know, I would evaluate that, too, based on somebody – I could see value in just like maybe hypertrophy being that uh, we're, we're building more of a mind muscle connection. Maybe there's something, there's a disconnect there. And I think it's a great way to address that versus like just jumping right to strength. Or if somebody is lacking strength in certain areas, we can hyper focus in that. So I, it just, again, it depends on the individual. So I like these questions and I don't like these questions. Uh, the reason why I don't like the question, I like the question for the same reason you guys do. But the reason why I don't like the question is because 
it loses a lot of people. You guys got to remember sometimes we're in our own little bubble here. Totally. We're talking about terms like power, hypertrophy, like this means nothing to the average person who's trying to get into working out or even phasing. Like what the fuck does that mean to them? And so I think it's important that we- Phaser beans. Yeah, I think it's important that we kind of unpack this a little more than just giving this, because the guy asking the question obviously- has a, a pretty solid base knowledge. He's, mm -hmm. he's trying to write his own program yeah. basically and is asking a very good question and already is ordering it in a pretty good way. So yeah, obviously he knows what the hell he's talking yeah, about. That's why I tried to open with like, what does hypertrophy mean? What does strength mean? What does power mean? You know, yeah. Obviously, if you haven't got it by now, phasing is just essentially the period of time that you're focusing on one of those specific goals. Mm -hmm. And like Adam said, it's usually a three to six week period. So Three to six weeks, you're focused on strength. So you're doing reps between one to five. You're doing longer rest periods. You know, the next three to six weeks could be hypertrophy, maybe a little shorter rest periods. The reps are higher, eight to 15. Um, and then power is, uh, you know, kind of a combination of the two. You're doing fast exercises, lighter weight. It's not about going to failure at all. You actually, in fact, you'd even want to go to fatigue. And the rest periods might even be longer than you did with, uh, with strength. Um, and again, that's another three to six uh, weeks. And again, that's the most complicated phase. So if you're new, I wouldn't even worry about power uh, at all. Don't mm -hmm. worry about power at all unless you have something laid out in front of you that really breaks it down for you. But just focus on strength and hypertrophy. Yeah, I rarely train clients in, in power. The two clients I saw or the type of client, I should say, that I, I would train in power is – Either one, somebody who I had for like a really long time and like we were just, we're getting fun with their programming. I've taken them through so many like yeah. strength and hypertrophy cycles and it's like, hey, let's, you know, even though you don't, you didn't come to me with this goal of like how powerful or strong can I be? Let's, let's see how well we can express this. You've been training with me now for almost a year and yeah. we've gone through all these different phases. And so we might have fun with it like that. Or someone very specific who is like playing a sport or needs that power and that's why they came to me. So that is the only time I really trained the average person in that in the phase like that for the most part it's most valuable i think for you know your athletes that are are looking for that or someone who's been lifting long enough and has got really good control and they they are now looking oh let's let's see test some limits and see how i can express that yeah you know it's funny defranco made the case for the average person to yeah. sprinkle in power but but i think when most people think power they think like jumping up high on a box and you no, know doing it's, clean. it's just moving quickly and yeah I, and I think that's where he was alluding to and that's where the value i see for your average person but it looks different than yes what you would think if you're programming it for fitness so it's uh you know doing things like just a press but having your tempo change right so we're just moving right we're moving quicker and i think that the, that's massively valuable especially with rotational stuff because it emulates a lot of real world you, type you things start real basic, yeah and you super basic. and you don't don't go there until you've done because let's be okay let's take oh, 100 yeah average. you add speed to any exercise you're right you just made it way i mean easier. i mean how many months did you spend with a, the, the average client who comes in who has like no strength or hypertrophy experience whatsoever how long do you spend it's with like them? a whole year yeah you're, yeah you're training that and that's what i meant was like you know once i got to a place where like okay this client i can tell her do a chest press she can get her, her shoulders yeah, in the right yeah, position yeah. she can activate it i can tell her slow your tempo down she does it automatically mm -hmm. like on cue i can do that okay now that client we're ready we're ready to express this and let's mm -hmm. see let's have some fun with it with some speed until then i ain't messing with oh that. to give you an example I, I, yeah. I had an older client that i trained for a long time and then we got to this point and literally the first exercise we did was she didn't she didn't jump on anything she just jumped in place i just had her literally mm -hmm. jump in place and land and then we'd rest and then practice it just to give her the coordination and skill to, in case you know steps off a curb or right. needs to move a little quicker